If you're looking to start a new career as a high-in-demand IT specialist or upgrade your current skill set and get paid above the average, continue watching. Hey, my name is Olga, I co-own Remote Software Development Agency and on this channel we talk a lot about IT careers and IT businesses and remote IT jobs, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be here on time. We release a new video each Wednesday and give me a thumbs up to help me grow this channel and let's begin. Thanks to my co-founder Alexander, a data architect, we already know what skills and steps you need to take in order to become a data engineer. If you still haven't, make sure to check out that episode where Alexander shares his experience and his tips on what you should do in order to become a data engineer. Check out that video after this one. I'll throw a link in the description below. First and foremost, don't overfancy it. Big data engineer is still a data engineer, but with a focus on creating and managing a company's a big amount of data, big data assets. Big data engineer is someone who knows how to get results from a vast amount of data quickly and efficiently. But typically the responsibilities of a data engineer and big data engineer are pretty much the same. And these are designing, maintaining, creating and managing the company's data pipelines aggregating and transforming raw data coming from a variety of data sources to fulfill the functional and non-functional business needs. Um, they also do performance optimizations, that is, they opt uh, automate processes, optimize data delivery and redesign the complete architecture to improve performance. They also handle, transform and manage big data using big data frameworks and NoSQL databases. And they also build complete infrastructure to ingest, transform and store data for further analysis and business requirements. For a big data engineer, mastering big data tools are a must. And some of the tools that you will be using in your uh, future profession as a big data engineer are, uh, first is it's HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, and just like the name suggests, it is the storage part of Hadoop which uh, stores the data in a distributed cluster. And of course, being the base of Hadoop, uh, knowing the HDFS is a must, uh, the first and basic step to learn to use this framework. Now, the second tool you might be wanting to use is Yarn, and Yarn performs resource management and uh, by allocating resources to different applications and scheduling jobs. The next tool is MapReduce, and MapReduce is a parallel processing paradigm which allows data to be processed in parallel on top of distributed Hadoop storage. The next two tools you might be wanting to master, you will need to master, are Peak and Hive. And Hive is a data warehousing tool on top of HDFS. Again, Hadoop is a must. Now, uh, Apache Peak is a high-level scripting language which is used for data transformation on top of Hadoop. And Hive is generally used by the data analyst to create reports, uh, whereas Peak is used by researchers for programming. Now, both are easy to learn if you're familiar with SQL. And actually, we are currently having a project that is all based on these uh, tools and technologies. So I can confirm that this is the case and you must learn these tools. The next two tools are Flume and Scoop, and both are needed in order to work with HDFS system. And Flume is a tool which is used to import unstructured data to HDFS, whereas Scoop is used to import and export structured data from RDBMS to HDFS. The next tool is Zookeeper, and Zookeeper acts as a coordin coordinator among uh, the uh, distributed services running uh, in Hadoop environment. And it uh, basically helps in configuration management and synchronizing services. The next very important tool is Ozi or Ozi. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it right. And neither does my Foundry data architect. So Ozi or Ozi. So Ozi is basically a scheduler that helps to bind together all the logical jobs and to accomplish a complete task. And while we are proceeding with the list, let me know in the comments which of the already mentioned skills you lack in order to become a big data engineer and which skills you will need to master. The next tool you will be needing is real-time processing um, framework and that is typically Apache Spark. And it is very important for a big data engineer to have 
real knowledge of uh, real-time processing tools such as Apache Spark. Apache Spark is a distributed real-time processing framework and it can be easily integrated with Hadoop leveraging uh, HDFS. The next is database architectures and I'm talking here about the general understanding of databases architectures and uh, this is a must-have tool, uh, it's not a tool, it's a must-have skill for any data engineer and big data engineer. And understanding databases architectures is crucial. And another uh, important skill is understanding of data modeling. So just like my co-founder Alexander said in that video of mine, this is all data managing. So you have to understand how it works. You have to understand the basics and the architecture and how it works and how you can build it and how you can optimize it. The next are SQL based technologies and this is a must have tool I should not even explain. SQL language helps to structurize, manipulate and manage the data stored in um, database. So typically we're talking about MySQL here, but you will also have to learn NoSQL technologies. And some of the NoSQL technologies that you might want to master, you will need to master, are HBase, which is a column-oriented NoSQL database on top of HDFS, which is good for scalable and distributed big data storage. Uh, the next is Cassandra, that is a must. It is a highly scalable database with um, incremental scalability and the best part here is minimal administration and no single point of failure. And the next uh, is MongoDB, which is a document-oriented NoSQL database that gives a full index support for high performance and replication of for fault tolerance. So talking about programming languages, that is either Python or R. If you're a beginner, go with Python because go with Python, <laughs> because R is generally used uh, by data scientists and it is generally used for analytical tasks and to perform data analytics. Whilst, um, and again, you can use actually any programming language because different programming languages can actually serve for the same purpose. But if you are a beginner or if you are considering what programming language you should uh, learn, make it Python. Now, the next skills you need to master are related to ETL and data warehousing solutions. And the main tools here would be uh, Talent and Informatica. Now, data warehousing is a crucial skill for you as a big data engineer. And data warehousing is very important when it comes, uh, when you have to manage the data that comes from different multiple heterogeneous uh, sources and you need to perform ETL, extract, transform, load. Now, data warehousing tools are generally used for data analytics and reporting, creating uh, multiple reports from that data and it is generally used for business intelligence. So man uh, mastering data warehousing tools like Talent and Informatica is crucial for any big data engineer. Not yet tired? Here's the inspirational bit, big data engineer salaries. And uh, according to Glassdoor, the uh, average uh, salary of a big data engineer, of a regular big data engineer, not senior, is uh, differs from 95,000 per year to $135,000 per year. And for a senior uh, big data engineer, it's uh, around uh, 185 thousand per year and this job is in high demand as of 2020 and uh, if we believe my awesome co-founder Alexander he thinks and I strongly believe that he is right that this job will be in high demand for the next decade that is for sure we create a huge amount of data that should be managed that should be analyzed and should and should somehow be stored for further use now I hope this list of skills have helped you to define which skills you lack to become a big data engineer and if you enjoyed the, this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up to help me grow this channel. And important here, make sure to subscribe for IT People community. The link will be in the description below. Uh, this is a waitlist and we will discuss there all sorts of issues related to IT world. That is how to upgrade your skills, how to start your IT business and so on. So make sure to subscribe to the waitlist. Click all the links you find below, like, like, comment. And I will be happy to see you here next Wednesday. I'll be waiting. Bye.